So in case you're looking for a setup which works something like this where the code is on the left, the input is on the right and the output is on the right and they're split across screen and you input something and you write the code and then you click one button and then the output is visible. If you want to set up something like this, this video is going to be about setting up a similar kind of setup. But before that, in case you're for the first time here, please make sure that you check out Strivers A to Z DSA course. Now this is the world's most in-depth DS algo course. Why do I say that? Because the course has 455 modules. Yes, we have solved over 455 problems and all the videos are free. You get premium quality articles as well. Over there, we have C++, Java, JavaScript, Python codes covered as well. So you get everything at one place and you don't need anything else. You can straight away prepare for it. And this is targeted for companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and all the other product-based companies in the market. And there's one other thing that I want to clarify. There's a lot of rumor that this particular course is in C++. No, that is not the truth. So the first couple of videos are in C++ where I'm teaching for loop while loop because they're pretty much similar in C++ and Java. So I've just taught in C++. If you know Java, you'll, you, you can easily grasp it, right? But when I move to recursion, when I move to arrays, when I move to binary search or any other thing, each of those lectures are recorded with logic and then pseudo code. I do not write code in any language. And after that, in the description, you'll find notes where you'll find C++, Java, JavaScript, Python codes in those notes. So this course is not language dependent. The first couple of videos might be, but the entire course is not. Only the basics like the for loop, while loop, printing stuff is in C++. After that, everything is pseudo code. Yes, pseudo code. I focus on the logic. So please uh, remember this and the link is in the description. Make sure you check it out. So let's get back to the VS code and try to set it up. So first I will be setting it up for C++. After that, I will be setting it up for Java and for any other language. If you see these two setups, you will be able to uh, set it up. So the first thing that you'll do is you'll just open the VS Code editor and right after that, you open a folder. So what I'll do is I'll go over here and I'll open C++. So I've opened C++. After that, I go uh, to the extensions and I install C++ extension. So search and you'll find an extension from Microsoft. I've already installed it. So please make sure that you install it. Once you've installed it, go back to this folder and try to create a file. So maybe I'll just create demo.cpp. So that's your file. After that, create another file with input.txt. After that, create one more file with output.txt. Done. Once you created these three files, go to view and go to edit layout and say split left. Once you split it left, you'll find demo is on the left as input and output. So just cross it out. So you have input over here and output. So you have input and output on the right. You want to split them across. So go to view again, edit a layout and say split down. Once you split them into down, so you can just drag the output and that should be done. So the input is on the top and the output is over here. Let's take a quick break before we move ahead. So nowadays, everyone is focusing on DS algo, but people are ignoring all the other aspects. Something like projects is going to be of extreme importance when you're going in for placements. So what I'll recommend you is to get a strong portfolio with projects and with DS algo as well. So what you can do is you can check out Cryo.do's project hub. Over there, they have structured a lot of projects according to domains. Let's say we go to web dev and you can see a lot of uh, project ideas and they are given in a structured manner. So you can follow them and build some amazing projects and you can build a portfolio like Pavitra Sharma over here. You can see his portfolio he has built some amazing projects. So you can have a portfolio, something like this when you're going in for your placement. So let's talk about Cryo.do as well. So Cryo.do is world's first experiential learning and upskilling platform. Over here, you don't typically watch videos. You basically learn by doing. So they offer you programs where you'll be working like a software engineer does at Amazon, Netflix, Google, etc. You'll be building some amazing projects. You can see on the screen and you'll be building under mentors who are working at Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Walmart, PayPal. So talking about placement stats, Cryo has already transformed 1000 plus careers. Cryo graduates from various backgrounds have already been placed in 750 plus companies. So they offer you fellowship program in software development. What you can do is you can book a free trial session and test it out for yourself. And at the same time, make sure that you bookmark the projects hub. I'll be leaving the link in the description and you'll also find the free trial session link in the description. Make sure you check them out. Now quickly try to run a code. So what I've done is I've copy pasted a demo code 
Now the next step is to run this. But before that, you have to go to terminal, configure tasks. There's something as create task. Click it. Others. Once you click on others, you see there's a VS Code folder and there's a task.json. Remove this configuration and go to the description. I'll be pasting the configuration. Just paste it. And remember one thing, the compile and run should be together. Save it and close it. And right after that, I'll be pressing command plus shift plus B. But before that, let's give an input 13, command shift and B. And you will see that there's an output. Quite simple, isn't it? So the configuration that you see over here, that's for C++ for MacBook. In the notes, like in the description, I'll be leaving some notes so you'll find for Windows as well. In case you have any other operating system, what you need to do is just copy paste the configuration that I've given in the notes, take it to chat GPT and whatever is your system, ask chat GPT, can you give me the equivalent for my system? And he will give you this copy paste and it will start working. So this is, this is how you set it up. Remember the stars.json is under your C++ folder in case you are switching folders. You'll have to again repeat the same thing. Got it? So that was easy for C++, isn't it? Now it's time for Java. It's very much similar. I go to open, I go to desktop, and open one of my folders. You can open from anywhere. The next thing, uh, install an extension, Java extension pack, yeah, this one. I've already installed it, so I'll not be reinstalling it. Right after this, what's the next job? Just uh, add a Java file, probably I can give demo.java. After that, add an input.txt which takes your input. Add an output.txt which takes your output. Go to view, edit a layout, split left. Once you've done this, this is how it looks like. And go to view, edit a layout, and it'll say split down. So once you do this, you can just drag it off and move this input. So you have your input and your output ready. Now let's quickly paste a demo Java code. So I've written a demo Java code. Now what is the next step to run it? So I'll go to terminal and there's something as configure task. Create task.json, others, and over here, you paste this configuration. I'll be leaving uh, this configuration in the links. So this is what you'll paste. And this is, this is basically the command which kind of takes the input. So the file names have to be input and output. And you can save it and close it. So once you click save, you can see that it is under a .vs code folder. And this is under the folder that I opened initially. So if you're changing folders, it will not run. You have to reconfigure the task. Got it? So what I'll do is I'll give an input over here. I'll try to run it. Command shift plus B. And you can see that it is running. This is how easy it was to set it up. So yeah, this was it. Uh, quite simple, isn't it? In case you're someone who uses Python or JavaScript, the blog links will be in the description. And in case you run into any of the errors, please do use ChatGPT. That will be helping you out. If you're still watching, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us and make sure you check out Strivers A to Z DS course because that can be a one-stop solution if you're preparing for placements. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, all the profile links will be in the description. With this, I will be wrapping up this video. Let's finish out the video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken, don't ever forget your golden.